Hey, hey, we, we left the recorder running again when we passed out. What the fuck now? I, I was endlessly amused that he could suck down that beef stew. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> are we ready? I've well, been recording. You've been recording, that's what I was afraid of. These are our wines for this evening. Our whites. Pier 52 Chardonnay, California, 2011. The Le Petit Tour Classic White, California, 2013. And Spencer Family Vineyard, Seven and Blanc, California, 2013. We'll see what they taste like here. But first, we need to open them up. Um, I usually just break the bottle on the end of it, uh, but you lose a lot of wine that way. This tool, this is the Swiss Army knife of wine. It's a good chance I'll take a finger off here. If you want to get picky about details on how to properly uh, open a bottle of wine and air it and do it, go watch another video. Good God, that's a small corkscrew. I have not field tested this corkscrew. We are not using that for the second. Woohoo. We've got our palate cleansers here, some saltines and celery. So I think we're prepared for this. I think so. Let's see. Checklist again. What noises, smells, sensations? It's soft. It's wow. soft. Yes. We've got our. Uh, We've got things to make us. us feel cozy. Yes. Feel at home. Our our fans, represented by mindless zombies. <laughs> Well, are you ready to start pouring some wine? I think so. As you know, there's a lot of ceremony and technique to tasting wine. You're supposed to swirl the liquid around in your cup a little bit to make it breathe. The sniff. Pour a little bit more. Mm, yes. Yeah, Smells good. I'm supposed to get the aroma. And then see how it sticks to the glass. Oh yes. It doesn't. It runs right on down. Oh, Is see, that, now that's a bad sign. Is that a bad sign? I well, can't remember if it was good or bad. Uh, the more, uh, I guess they call it legs. The more uh, sticks to the side, the more alcohol there is in it. Oh, so this is. This is dainty. I'm ready to throw my glass across the room right now. I am too. It's not sticking to the cup sides at all. Look at that. We got the wrong wine glasses. God damn it. Oh, that could be it. I told you to get the funnel. That's next. This is usually for later in the party. Oh, but a very important thing about the wine tasting that ancient Romans started is you are supposed to cheers so that a little bit of your wine sloshes into the wine of the person you're cheersing to make sure you're not trying to poison each other. Hmm. So before we take a sip, Ed, for my comfort, I would like to know that you're not trying to poison me. Well, we poured it out of the same bottle a second ago, but... That doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You never know. 
That actually didn't slosh over though, and I can't imagine doing that without getting it all over my floor. Hmm. Should we? There we go. That's a that's a good solid cheers right there. Yeah. So, either both or neither of us will be dead by the end of this video. Both. Both probably. I poisoned it. Ah. Well, I should say one last thing. We have all we've talked about ceremony and all the various rituals that go with that. You should know now that neither of us care about any of that. We just want the alcohol. Here we go. Fair enough. I do like that wine. It's not bad. Yeah, I tend to like slightly dry. This is slightly dry. But it's for a white wine, it's very dry. Usually when you're tasting wine, it's customary to swirl the wine around in your mouth to get the taste and then spit it out. We do not believe in wasting alcohol like that. Another test, as you saw in our other video, is the cracker test. But they do this in every winery around the world. If you go to a winery and they are not dipping crackers in their wine, tell them they don't know what they're doing. So as we discussed, it's also irreligious because crackers and wine go together. Yeah. We have it in church all the time. Hmm. That was terrible with crackers. Yeah. yeah, I can't say Fail. that. Fail. Yeah. And this wine fails the cracker test. Definitely fails the cracker test. Ooh. That was, ugh. That yeah, was we, really bad. We won't do that again. I'll do it again. No, this yeah. one. But I'll do it with the next oh, one. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. I'm, Man, that failed bad. I don't even know. I need some celery. Cleanse my palate from that cracker crack. Time to cut. He ran away. Supposedly, it matters a great deal what kind of glass or container you uh, drink your wine from. We're not going to try it here, but I think we can definitely recommend you do not do it from flip-top cans. Not that you get those a lot these days. A box is okay, though. Because they're... Uh, a lot of big blocks walk... Big box. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's having its effect already. <laughs> Stay back! <laughs> we'll cut that in there. drink at my fucking life! Oh, God, we'll do that. So we're going to try a couple different containers. I have unequal ones here. These are cognac. I can't imagine these would be much different. Although, I don't know the science of this. Other than it probably keeps the, I suppose they would object if I said fumes in there. Aroma. <laughs> <laughs> Aroma. <laughs> the fumes. Keeps the wine fumes in there. <laughs> I don't t sense any difference other than my, I kind of have to wedge my nose down in there to get the liquid out. <laughs> the only difference I can think of is I feel like this is a more candy sized cup. When it comes to, when it comes to drinking things, let me start that again. When it comes to drinking things, what counts for us is volume. That's why we got the damn funnel. That's right. <laughs> You know, I've got to yeah, tell you, minute. I've got to be honest here, and I know I have a biased opinion, because mm -hmm. I tend to like red wines and sweeter wines. I don't like this wine. The more I'm tasted, the more sips I take of it, the less I like it. Mm. Like, I, I, it's drinkable, Yeah. but I just, I really don't, maybe it's because I'm used to drinking crap box wine. You could mix Sprite with it. The Sprite fixes everything. Yes. Like. Oh, I need another shot of this. Hmm. Didn't you bring out another cup for us to try? Yes, I did. I'd forgotten I'd been drinking. First, we'll try these. Oh, shot glasses. Shot glasses. I'm not taking a shot of this. I mean. I must say this. 
I think it tastes worse than the shot glass. Yeah, that does not work, does it? No! That's, wine in a shot glass is a terrible idea. Yeah, we're not doing that again. Yeah, okay. no, I'm not taking another sip of that. Okay. That was bad. No. Wait, I, I'm actually, I'm genuinely surprised about that, though. Because, like, I was expecting it to taste the same, and it was like, ooh, what happened? Now, here is our final cut. Of course. Coffee cups, I don't know. That just... That tastes like poverty. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, I can argue with that. Um, I have to say the only thing that would that would make it taste even more like poverty is if we remembered to get some Dixie cups. Yes. Uh, this is this is like I'm turning twenty one in two months, so I don't really give a shit anymore, and I'm gonna drink anyway. And mm. the only cup I have in my cabinet is my coffee mug that I use every morning. And that's what this is right here. You you were speaking as a hypothetical twenty year old and not you, right? Okay. Because that sounded like it was you saying you were twenty on and drinking wine on camera. So, just so we know, both of I'm us are available. I'm not twenty anymore, though. Yeah, there we go. Go back in time and sue me. Yeah, there we go. I'm thinking Boone's Farm and Dixie Cups in a public park <laughs> at two in the morning with someone you just picked up <laughs> ten minutes ago ten minutes ago in a western bar and you don't remember their name yeah are you talking about poverty or your dating life both um is <laughs> is they overlap a lot <laughs> <laughs> with that with that yeah Ah, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm.